to Crow Forest Reviews. So, the last episode was not exactly a proper Christmas episode, on account of uh, not exactly featuring a proper Christmas movie. So, um, have another one. This is Winnie the Pooh, A Very Merry Pooh Year. Which, um, based on the title, uh, may or may not be a proper Christmas movie. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, the movie starts out with Pooh carrying a Christmas tree into his house. That's promising. This might be a proper Christmas episode after all. So Piglet comes to the door, but the voices in Pooh's head tell him not to answer the door. It's Piglet. Quick, hide his present. That's concerning. And so a crowd gathers outside his door, unable to enter. At least until Rue points out that they can just go in. It's not like they have locks in this universe. That's also kind of concerning. Anyway, the reason why Pooh didn't want to let anyone in just yet is because he was scrambling to hide Piglet's Christmas presents, which he does in his honey closets. Which, um, wow. That, that's quite, I don't even know what to make of that. Okay, moving on. So everyone sings a song while they trim the tree, meaning, of course, they decorate it. And yes, that's not anything against this movie. That's a very common idiom. I just find it to be a very strange idiom. Seriously, trimming trees means something very different. I can't be the only one to have this problem. So after that, Rabbit starts telling a Christmas story, which means that, of course, we get a crummy-ass clip show, as Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2 starts playing. Damn it, I've already reviewed that! Oh well, I guess I'll just reuse my old footage. Well, guess I'm on break. Hello and welcome to Crow Forest Reviews. This is Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2. So the special opens with a snowflake falling through the sky of the Hundred Acre Wood until it's snatched out of the air by Tigger, who declares that it needs more salt. Mm, needs more salt! <laughs> well, that makes sense. So anyway, Pooh and his friends are all gathered together on a cliff top, telling Christopher Robin what they want for Christmas. Because I guess Christopher Robin is the stand-in for Santa in this universe. Dear Santa, well guys, you've been awfully good this year. What kind of presents are you gonna ask for? Oh wait, no, he's asking them what they want from Santa. So I guess this makes him a stand-in for Mall Santa. Wow, he couldn't even afford a fake beard. This mall Santa sucks. So anyway, everyone tells Christopher Robin what they want for Christmas, with Pooh interjecting that everyone needs to be given a pot of honey, just in case a certain someone comes to visit them. Could Santa also bring Rabbit a small smackerel of honey, just in case certain guests drop in? Wow. Way to make it all about you there, Pooh. So anyway, after they've all put in their requests, Christopher Robin sends the letter off to the North Pole by letting go of it and letting the wind carry it. Um... That really doesn't seem like the best system. What if the wind dies down? Or changes direction? And what if the letter gets caught in a tree? Or soaked through by the snow? Doesn't this universe have a post office? Even Whoville has a post office. <laughs> um, anyway. Cut to Pooh's house, where Pooh is showing off his Christmas tree to Piglet. Hello, Piglet. How do you like my Christmas tree? Wow, that's just pathetic. I mean, I've got a real Christmas tree behind me. Wait, what happened to my Christmas stock footage? Yeah, see? I've got a real fake Christmas tree behind me. Wait, what's going on? 
Oh, stop it! Stop! That shoot! My green screen appears to be broken. Uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, come to think of it, this is even sadder. <laughs> so anyway, Piglet has come over because he's concerned that Pooh never added a gift request of his own to the list. And so, Pooh and Piglet come up with an overly complicated plan of retrieving the letter and adding a gift request. Hey, wait a minute! What does he mean that Pooh never asked for a present? He asked for honey pots for everyone in town! And before you think, oh, well, he was just too busy selflessly thinking of other people and trying to get more stuff for them to even think of his own needs, um, no. Those were clearly all for him. Even if it wasn't painfully obvious in the intro what he intended those for, which it was, it is an established fact in this universe that none of the others like honey. So, yeah, he was just trying to get extra presents. So anyway, after a little body horror slash I think that was supposed to be funny, Pooh and Piglet take off in their jury-rigged cold air balloon in order to retrieve the letter. And wouldn't you know it, they just happened to crash land in the exact same spot the letter did. Wow, this postal system is terrible. So anyway, Pooh and Piglet decide to take the letter to Rabbit's house, as he's the most likely to have a pencil for editing purposes. Because rabbits are well known for always having pencils? Damn straight we are! Always come prepared! But it turns out that Rabbit is currently under siege by an army of particularly festive bugs. Christmas carolers! <laughs> Wait, just what the hell kind of bugs are those? They look like little dinosaurs. Anyway, Rabbit defeats the army of bugs, and he gets the pencil for Pooh. But upon editing the letter, everyone goes a little crazy and starts asking for fancier and fancier stuff. But on the plus side, they are asking for stuff for each other, so that's nice. Four snowshoes for Tigger, so he can vote six times higher, and ten pots of honey for Pooh! Eleven. So Pooh and Piglet send off the letter again. But the wind switches direction, because that's what wind does. But I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure the letter knows its way. Oh, I'm certain the letter knows its way. So anyway, Rabbit and Tigger wake up Gopher. For some reason. Tell me where you want it! Here, over here! Perfect! Wait, they needed him to move a tree? Gophers can't do that! I'm starting to think that the logic of this Christmas special isn't very sound. And then they decorate the tree. And of course, Eeyore is elected to be the tree topper. Poor Eeyore. Though, on the plus side, that is the most festive tree topper I've ever seen. I need an Eeyore tree topper. And then the letter blows back to them. Because of course it does. And so, Pooh decides that in order to save Christmas, he's going to have to dress up as Santa Claus and deliver the presents himself. Ho, 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 gasp, Santa Claus! Hey, wait a minute, he can afford a fake beard? So anyway, Pooh delivers the presents, but unfortunately, they suck. Come both! No! Just what I always wanted! 
Definitely not what I always wanted. So Rabbit, Tinker, and Eeyore go to confront Santa, but after he crashes his sleigh, they see that it's really Pooh, and they appreciate what he was trying to do. And so, Pooh decides to set off for the North Pole himself to hand deliver the letter to Santa. But he doesn't quite make it, and he has to come back. But he is gone long enough to give his friends time to realize that being together with friends is more important than getting stuff. And so, they all learn the true meaning of Christmas, just in time to get presents anyway. Because of course Christopher Robin already knew what the letter said, and he he just got them the stuff, making the entire conflict of the movie entirely pointless. Yeah. So that was Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2. How was it? That was really good. As Christmas specials go, this one is short, sweet, and to the point. And of course, Pooh and his friends are always great. So if you, like the rest of the world, are getting really tired of a Charlie Brown Christmas, try this one instead. So Rabbit finally finishes his story, having bored everyone to sleep by relating the story that they already knew, on account of having been there. And so we finally get some more original content, as they all go out the next morning and sing another uninspiring song. I mean, that's original, it's not good. And then Tigger starts tormenting Rabbit with some bells. Hmm, how very Edgar Allan Poe of you. The bells, the bells, the bells, 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 the tintinabulation of the bells. So anyway, it turns out that Pooh never actually gave Piglet his present on account of having forgotten where he hid it in the questionable honey closet, you'll recall. And then suddenly it's New Year's, and I guess Pooh gave up on trying to find Piglet's presence. That was sure worth bringing up and then not resolving. Can we go back to the crummy-ass clip show? At least that had a plot. So anyway, Rabbit loses a carrot, and then immediately finds it, and Tigger brags about how the snow is no impediment to his bouncing. Even though that is a blatant contradiction to what we just saw in the clip show segment. Snow does not keep Tiggers from bouncing. Not one bitty bit. You think Sandy Claus will bring me a snowshoe for my tail? Why would you want that? <laughs> and then Tigger wrecks Rabbit's house. What a nice guy. So Rabbit decides that he's had enough of his friend's antics, and he tells them that he's going to leave, causing Pooh to decide that the best course of action is for all of them to make New Year's resolutions to be nicer to Rabbit. Since Rabbit isn't happy with the way we are, we could all make a resolution. Which, um, wasn't... Tigger the main problem, so how is this going to help? I mean, sure, Rabbit was annoyed about Pooh eating honey and about Piglet being scared of everything, but, um, yeah, just change yourself for your friend. The, the, this doesn't seem like it's going to end well. Like, Sure, Rabbit had a legitimate grievance against Tigger. I mean, he kind of wrecked the guy's house, but... Uh... Yeah, I don't see this ending well. So this whole change yourself to accommodate your friends thing is... Not great! Also, there's this. Never bounce another bounce! Nevermore! Will I Nevermore! Will I... Damn, I was just kidding about the Edgar Allan Poe connections. But that was blatant. Quoth the Tigger, nevermore. So they all try very hard to suppress their instincts, and that somehow results in them switching personalities? Um, what? Pooh is gloomy, Piglet is bouncy, Tigger is scared, and Eeyore likes honey. 
So the world completely falls apart on account of everyone doing the wrong things, or something, and so they have to return to doing their own things in order to write the universe, or something. But then they all feel bad about breaking their resolutions. And so the moral of the story is, don't make New Year's resolutions. Like, ever. It will only result in bad things. Seriously, like, this is apocalypse shit here. And so the movie ends with a New Year's party. Let's just let bygones be gone. Okay, that's a good line. And then Pooh finally remembers where he put Piglet's present and goes to retrieve it. And not a moment too soon, either. He squeaked that in right before the end credits. So, um, that's resolved now. Yay. That was really bothering me. I mean, I'd completely forgotten about it, but if I'd remembered, that would have been really bothering me. I feel like this is a very uninspiring Christmas special, so, um, sorry.